Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. All Things Middle Earth here with a build guide on Saruman. We just talked about Skalhum in our last video, and they are one half of the army I'm running this season. And I haven't really done build guides on either of them in a long time, so I feel like it would be good to cover how to build them again, what troops to use, gear skills, all that kind of stuff. Details coming up on Saruman in just one second. <laughs> Okay, so starting out with Saruman, again, with all my videos, I like to try and explain very, very quickly what the commander is trying to do, because every account is different. The, the respect you have, the gear, all this stuff is going to be different. So I feel like it's important to understand why we're doing something so you can do what makes the most sense for your account, instead of me just saying, do this, this is the best option. I think learning is, is part of this. If you hate that, I'm sorry. But very, very quickly, Saruman, the skills that he has that we're going to really focus on are going to be his elemental damage skills. This one you can see here, it's a big focus damage hit. And this one is focus, uh, poison, and burn damage. So what we want to put on Saruman is going to be focus, any gear that has focus, because this increases the amount of focus, burn, and poison damage he deals, as well as damage for him. So the damage stat determines the ability for all types of damage, and focus is specifically damage related to those elemental factors that we talked about. So for my Saruman, and I'll show you guys a spreadsheet in a second. For my Saruman, this is the gear I'm running. I am running, first of all, a full Perseverance set, mostly just because I had it laying around. I don't I mean, I think this is a very good one for him, but um, there could be other options as well. But for me, I am running a Morgul Blade, which does have a pretty good amount of focus. We have some initiative. We have some commander damage. We have a Protection of Numenor, which is the highest focus-based item in the game. We have a Great Wizard Hat, which is another uh, best-in-slot focus item for the game. And then a Fine Smoking Pipe, which has damage and focus also being the highest focus. So really this is three of four kind of highest, best focus items in the game uh, with the Morgul Blade because I didn't, I didn't have an Obsidian Dagger with uh, the Perseverance on it. So this is a very high or pretty high focus build. Again, I have about four stars and everything, so it could be higher. This is a very high focus build that does get us some of that commander damage. And again, I'm going to link this down below in this video as well. This is a spreadsheet that shows every piece of gear in the game because at the end of the day, every account is going to be different. So what I have in my account or what I'm suggesting just may not be what you have. So you might have to look here. I'm sorting right here on this side by armor, and I can see that the highest focus uh, piece in the game is Protection of Numenor, followed by Great Plate of the East, followed by the Elven Cloak, so on and so forth. So you can look through your account and see, starting with number one, if you have that, if you don't, go to number two, then three. And sometimes you might plug in the third or fourth best option to make a set that makes sense. Again, that's what I did for my Skull Helm, which it's not perfect, but for me, it works. I'm running the golden skin in this slot, for example, so that I can make an agility set because I want a little bit more speed on my Skull Helm. So for Saruman, it worked out a little bit cleanly for me in terms of having first or second options, but it's okay to plug in other things. But this spreadsheet will be down below if you ever want to look through and see, again, everything I've highlighted above me, these are all the, the armor pieces that have focus. So I'd at least run one of these, try and get one near the top, but at the end of the day, every account's different. And you might have to plug in a purple item until you have the right gold items to use. If you're brand new, again, don't sweat it. I mean, if you're brand new, you're probably not running a bunch of tier three commanders anyway, but if you are brand new, if you have blue gear or green gear, just look for things that have focus, that have commander damage. That's why I start the videos by kind of explaining what the commander's trying to do, because it's not a one size fits all. Eventually, the goal is to get to where, you know, you're kind of running best in slot, but that could take years for some people. So this is what I'm running and kind of the gear suggestions for Saruman. Now, as far as skills go, he's fairly simple. We're going to put all our points into Voice of Saruman first because we want this damage received by um, targets affected by Stunner Madness because he does have a Stunner Madness. So we want that going first to overlap when possible with this skill so that these uh, this hit right here, which is a pretty decent sized hit, is going to deal a little bit more damage. So we do Voice of Saruman followed by Voice of Many Colors or of Many Colors. And then lastly, we're gonna go into Sharky. This is going to increase the attack and defense of Orc or Akai Evil Men. Um, if you have enough to potentially get level five for more initiative, I think it's fine. Uh, but these are just kind of extra points at this point. Blantyr Scryer can be good, but unless you have enough points to make Saruman immune to madness, it is a risk. And if you madden him, these are some big hits going to your side. So you already have Sauron trying to madden you. Trying to madden yourself is just, it's, it's, it is risky. If you can get to five points and want to roll the dice on 15%, knock yourself out. But me personally, I'm just going to go with Sharky with my extra points when I get him to R5. Um, so just take that with a grain of salt. For me, it's the R3 followed by top R1 and then into Sharky as the kind of final uh, remainder of points. Now, as far as the relic goes for Saruman, I'd like to give them a pass or fail. 
They're very expensive. They take a lot of time. They are non-refundable. So make sure you know what you're doing before you get a relic. But long story short, Sauron or Saruman's relic, mixing them up, Saruman's relic is going to get a pass for me. It is basically like adding an additional attack every single round. It says commander, normal attacks, inflict an additional 120% focus damage. So every round, that's just an additional 120 going out every time. It's like adding a full nether skill that does damage. So it is one of the best relics in the game. I think the only other two relics better in the game are Legolas and Lurtz. They're the same thing, just for physical damage and physical damage, normal attacks scale better with physical gear. It's a whole spiel, but it's still, I think, one of the best relics in the game. Um, so if you are running a Saruman and want to invest him over time, it's a relic worth getting, in my opinion. Now, before we look at troops, I want to talk about who you can run Saruman with. Again, I'm running this kind of like anti-meta CC lineup, which may not be for everyone. At the end of the day, Saruman is a damage dealing commander. So we want to pair him with some amount of other damage dealers and some amount of support. So the kind of meta as it stands right now is Gandalf the White, it's Sauron with Dane and Bayorn. So Saruman could technically take the place of any damage dealer with other support. So you could run Saruman, Sauron, Gandalf the White, and another damage dealer like Dane or Bayorn or Galhelm or whoever, um, but he is going to fill a damage slot. We've done a lot of videos. I'll link one of the videos up in the top right. Actually, we did a whole video breaking down like how to choose what commanders to run together. So especially if you're new and trying to figure that out, I actually put some graphs on the screen and talk about how to kind of classify commanders. Again, you look at what they do, you know, these are all damage skills. So Skullhelm's a damage commander. You look at what Sar uh, Saruman does, these are all damage skills. So he's a damage commander. So you want to pair ideally pretty equally damage with support, sometimes as low as one support to three damage, but you want some kind of balance there. So with Saruman, uh, we're gonna try and pair him with two supports and another damage ideally. Now, as far as troops go for Saruman, I'm going to suggest Berserkers. Again, they are a pretty well-rounded, tanky, cheap troop we can use, and they have a lot of initiative. They have a 13 initiative. Now, in my opinion, Saruman does not care as much about speed as someone like Skalhelm we just talked about, or others like Gandalf the White and Sauron. So you could run Guardians on Saruman. I think that would be fine. Um, so some people run a combination of Guardians and Berserkers, where they run Berserkers on Sauron or Gandalf the White because they really want speed, and other commanders that don't care as much run guardians for a little bit more bulk but less speed but if you're wanting a little bit more speed or if you're evil only berserkers are a great choice but guardians are great as well again i'm a big fan of cost effective cheap troops you can just crank them out non-stop and keep fighting as much as possible so berserkers guardians something like that will be great for saruman but that will do it for our build guide on saruman again let me know what you guys think of him again i think he's got a great relic i think he's got a simple but very effective kit i think he's a very iconic character which as a fan of lord of the rings middle earth all that I do like running him over some of the more made up commanders, to be honest. But again, you kind of got to run what works in this game. So let me know what you guys think and let me know who you want to see covered in future videos because I'll have more coming out very shortly. But that'll do it for this one and I'll see you guys in the next video.